This is Daffy Like, you can call me Ursa, and today we're going to pronounce the protagonist's name Eliana. It being time to review some more literature, because it is World Book Day after all. Fires of the Faithful is the first novel by Naomi Kritzer, and there are three things you need to know before deciding whether or not you might like it. One, the world building revolves around magic and religion in kind of alt history Italy. Two, music is also heavily involved in the plot. Three, our protagonist, Eliana, is a lesbian. The books are the pretty freaking entertaining adventures of Eliana, conservatory violinist turned old-timey magical rebel with a cause. I really like them, but that's mostly, I think, because I really liked her. How much you like these books is going to be heavily dependent on how much you like Eliana. And Eliana is an occasionally cross-dressing 16-year-old lesbian violinist who can demonstrably do two kinds of supernatural shiz, but tends to regard the religions of both with kind of... not quite scepticism, but... Something along those lines. She tends to go along with them in a, eh, well, you know, if it works, kind of way. The plot, in basic and non-spoilery terms, goeth thusly. Eliana is a 16-year-old student at a conservatory in a rural area when she gets a new roommate called Mira. Because of reasons, she ends up getting inducted into the old-timey Red and Tory faith, and thus subsequently kind of rebelling against the Church of the Lady, who are the main par hereabouts. There's a sort of Inquisition feel to the Faithful of the Lady, the Fideli, which is not particularly surprising, considering both the alt-history Italy setting and, of course, the fact that the writer has a BA in religion. You can tell. The books are ambitious in scope, and they don't always succeed with it, but I have reread them about four or five times because I really like them, so I am recommending them for you to try. Let's talk about magic and religion for a second. Magic in Fires of the Faithful and the sequel, Turning the Storm, comes in two flavours. First, the magic associated with the Lady, which includes witch light, which is making a light in your hand, being able to light a candle, if you're a little bit more adept at it you can light a fire from damp wood, and if you're really, really good, which not many people are, you can rain fire, death and destruction down from the heavens. Yeah. Also, more magic use leads to lower fertility, which does not mean less sex having, it just means that you're less likely to make a baby out of it, and because of this, the Church of the Lady encourages you to have as much sex as possible with, like, loads of people, and if you knock one of them up or they knock you up, then clearly you should get married and go raise the baby. One way of doing it, I guess? The second kind of magic in the universe is related to the Redentory God, the Old Way God, and I can't really tell you very much about it without being too spoilery, but suffice it to say, it involves music and dancing, and the Redentory can pull off some pretty impressive shiz when they put their minds to it. But the thing I like best about this world and these religions and these different types of magic is that they work for everybody. They are absolutely no help in deciding which of these religions is true or good or going to make you your best self or going to help you serve a higher power or make the world a better place. Both of them are about serving a higher power and both of them demonstrably work. Look, there you are, making witch light in your hand. Look, there you are, doing one of the Red and Tory magic dances and doing things which I can't tell you about because they're spoilery, but still they're pretty impressive. The magics themselves are no kind of guide to which of these religions is real or true, or if they're both true, or if they're both false, or if one of them is obviously right and one of them is obviously wrong, or if it's kind of a mix and match situation. Good, bad, and indifferent people can be found on both sides of the divide, and that's nice. People don't divide neatly along the lines of religion in real life. Why should they in fantasy? Eliana herself has more doubt than faith most of the time, and, like, several of the characters is pretty agnostic on the subject of, you know, religion and stuff. They all do magic, everyone can do magic, but the faith that goes with it, sometimes she has it, sometimes she doesn't. Her ability to do the magic is not predicated on her faith. Normally, the higher the fantasy, the sharper the lines between good and evil, unless you're PC Hodgel. And there's a certain simplicity to this, this is the light side and this is the dark side and ne'er the twain shall meet. But even in those universes, that's never really how it works out anyway, is it? To take a recent example, just because the Jedi shun the dark side of the Force doesn't make them wholly good or pure or nice people. Their ability to use the Force is predicated on their concentration and their skill, not how pure their soul is. Although admittedly there are fantasy worlds where how pure your soul is is very important. In Eliana's world, we infer that the real big questions of life are more pragmatic than that. Yes, you must decide whether or not you think the Church of the Lady has the right idea, or whether the Red and Tory have the right idea, or whether they're both completely bonkers, or, you know, maybe they're right about some things, but meh, or maybe this whole god thing isn't for you, or whatever. But, ultimately, you must also decide what you will let your faith make you do, or 
what you will justify to yourself and others using that faith. Yes, it's important to know what you believe and why you believe it, but just as important is knowing that. How do you act as a good person in this world in which you have found yourself? Which is much more interesting to me than, will you choose the good religion or the bad religion, Eliana? Especially because in their world, as in ours, you cannot prove whether or not gods exist. And even if the magic associated with a religion exists, then that doesn't necessarily mean that the religion is true, does it? So what you end up judging religions or belief systems on is not what kind of god do they believe in or not believe in, but what does that make them do as people? Does their belief system motivate them to be better people doing good things in the world? Or is it an excuse to further their own ambition or justify the hurt that they wish to do to people? In the name of whatever. A pretty darn important question. So if magic and religion and alt history Italy sounds like something you would be interested in, then you should definitely check out Fires of the Faithful and the sequel Turning the Storm. And of course, if you are in a position to comment, like you're on Channel Awesome, or you are on Shea Apocalypse, or Geek Vision, or wherever, then you should leave your favourite book for World Book Day in the comments below. See you next time!